Hello everyone, welcome back to Control. Last time, we covered pretty much all the side quest stuff in the containment sector. So today we're heading to the final sector that we haven't thoroughly explored, the research sector. And while I do think we need to start with a little bit of luck on our side, as luck would have it, there's nothing new to find in the probability department. So at least that's one place where we don't need to look very thoroughly. I do want to at least poke my head in just about everywhere, but I'm pretty sure that none of the restrooms in the oldest house have any stuff that we couldn't get to before. And now we need to search this place from top to bottom. So we probably ought to start in Dr. Darling's office, since he is the head of research. Don't think there's anything new to see here, though. And of course, when we say top to bottom, there's a lot more above us that we weren't able to get to any earlier than this. In fact, we can barely get to it now. I can just barely reach this ledge directly above Dr. Darling's office. Presumably, at least some of these blocked doors have staircases behind them. Otherwise, I have no idea how most people would be able to get to work. Slight bit of tidying up, because I'm expecting to find a lot of rewards around. Now, in order to get to those really, really high up ledges, we're going to have to float up from here. And again, I can just barely make it. I don't know whether we needed levitation upgrades to get here, but it's a good idea to have them. And I think I can get even higher still, but it's just bright light up here. I'm pretty sure there's nothing actually to find. This ledge, though, there is one unblocked door. And down here we find another hallway with acoustic paneling may look familiar. And well it should, because there's another acoustic research lab. About as far as you can get from the first one. And a blackboard with a lot to talk about. Those random words on the left side are actually the track list from the album Soap by Finnish experimental band Socks and Ballerinas, which is what that numeric code at the bottom says. And those weird letters or Bandcamp codes that used to be a download for this album. But they're all used up now. The chemical symbol in the upper right is the symbol for sodium stearate, which is the main ingredient in the majority of soaps. And this is what I was thinking of when I said that I was expecting stuff to float around in the other acoustic lab where they're listening to Poets of the Fall. I'm going to borrow this dummy for a moment, actually. Pausing to pick up another intrusive pattern. Because this is something that I discovered very recently. They put a dummy in there to listen to socks and ballerinas. And it sort of floats around while the song is on. And that song, which you might remember as being what was playing on the radio just outside the mailroom way back near the beginning of the game, that was Salmon Soup, the first track on the album Soap. I didn't recognize it at the time, and honestly still didn't when I was recording this. I just looked it up afterwards to see what it was all about. And that was all a really clever Easter egg dedicated to another band. I don't know what the connection between Remedy and Socks and Ballerinas is, but... Anyway, we just need to bring the mannequin down here, where it can listen to some Poets of the Fall. And now, stuff is floating around this lab, and we get a reward. Another mod that's not even as good as what I already have. Yep, kind of a waste, but hey, it's neat to see and we learned a little something about music. That's what the research department is all about, right? Learning stuff! 
That or I'm trying to fill time because I don't have anything more interesting to say. Look, fighting! Can take out some of these dudes along the way. And we have a named Hiss Wart. Always fun to fight more powerful versions of really powerful enemies. Fortunately, I've grown a lot since the last time I fought a Hiss Wart. No problem. Although I think I'm getting level 1 mods. And starting to see a whole bunch of levitation ammo efficiency. I don't know why, but it seems like about half the mods that drop are levitation ammo efficiency. It's probably not a terrible mod, I just don't shoot while levitating often enough for it to be better than many other mods that I've got. So, I might as well look down here while I'm at it. Check the cafeteria, not likely to be anything. I know there will be something in one of the bathrooms down here later, but since it's not there yet, I'm not going to waste time going and checking that side. Let's get back to the roughly top-to-bottom examination. And head back up this way. There's a window up there that I've previously been in, and a ledge that I'm sure I've overlooked many, many times, because I'm pretty sure there was no way to get to it. This one, at least, I can kind of see maybe you'd be able to drop down from above and evade your way over. It just doesn't seem likely that you could do that. And more from Dr. Lewis. This guy just complains about everything. I wonder whether this was before or after he tried to bribe Dr. Darling for a bigger budget with alcohol. Meanwhile, we actually have a couple of unblocked doors to get through here, and yeah, no point coming here before you've got your mold vaccine, but I've got it, so I can quite boldly enter the room. I don't really know what any of these formulas are about. Certainly acids, but that's all I can make out from it. And we get a procedure document for that hammer we saw in the Panopticon. This is kind of interesting, because it's... A mallet from one of those strength test machines, you know, the ones that no matter how hard you hit it, it always tells you that you're a wuss or no muscles or something like that. And when you come into contact with it, it actually gives you a muscle degenerative disease. For once, I actually recognize the significance of what the object is to the effect. And we finally get our ability point for coming all the way up here. And now we're surrounded by mold guys with a killer soundtrack to fight them. And I forgot that I even had an active bureau countermeasure for that. Let's make things blow up. I really didn't like charge very much the first time I played control because I kept getting caught in the explosions myself. But I can't deny, it's really effective when you use it properly. Especially on groups of enemies like that. I mean, this group pretty much will kill you if you're not expecting them to be there. There are just dozens of them surrounding you out of nowhere. I don't know what song that is. I don't know if there's any significance to it, and I don't trust any of those look up a song from a sound clip services enough to use them anymore, so if anyone knows more about it than I do, feel free to let me know. At least I managed to upgrade one of the mods that I actually use. That's a rarity. A 
little bit of cleanup. Don't mind me, I don't think there's going to be all that much to this video to worry about speeding up or cutting out the maintenance. I think I'm pretty good with the mods that I've got. So, back to going through more familiar territory. I think this is all the secret areas that I couldn't get to before. Although, I'm not actually done on this ledge, because there's another room, probably connected to that one through this blocked off door. But we gotta break in through the window. And I'm gonna skip the hot spot back there just for a moment. Grab another mod that I'm probably not gonna use, and now this. It's done. It's just one large scale HRA. So yeah, that was clearly one of the last things that he recorded. You know, we saw in the video in his office his mind was kind of going downhill, but he's really gone by that point. And I think he referenced both Space Oddity and 2001 A Space Odyssey. As for what he was talking about... I don't really know, but we did hear from Arish earlier that Darling was concerned about only having one large-scale HRA, and there he was talking about where he had placed it. A lot of pieces to put together. Meanwhile, let's check out the parakinesiology department. Again, I don't think there's anything new to see here, but... I do kind of want to put some attention on whoever or whatever that is. I'm pretty sure it's the same kind of dummies that we've seen elsewhere, like the one that's levitating in one of the audio labs at this point. Infected by the hiss, but just sitting in the chair. I'm pretty sure it should be doing something else if I stare at it long enough, but... It doesn't seem to be, and it's kind of creeping me out. Maybe I need to look away from it. Or maybe I just should. Check the other one. Oh, there we go. It goes and hides behind the chair. And then sits down and just starts twitching again. It's almost Roger Rabbit-esque. But there's nothing else that I know of to see up here. No raised ceilings where they could hide something I'd levitate to. So we'll just head on into the Astral Exhibition. Again, I don't think there will be any raised ceilings or anything to spot here. Although we now know what that thing is. We've seen it and fought it a couple times. You 
into the exhibition itself, I think. No need to worry about flashing lights now. The Astral Spike is permanently imprisoned. I don't think there even is a way to release it at this point. Doesn't look like there's anything inside the cardboard pyramid either. Although, it is kind of interesting to get a closer look at it. We'll just move on. There are some nice big rooms down here, so we could find something. And at the very least, more fighting is always something to break the tedium. I think the other shard started going down the stairs as soon as I levitated over the side, because it knew it couldn't get to me by going up. I think sometimes the Hiss Elevated will spawn in the chairs, and the chairs will actually start flying around with them. Which might have happened the first time I was in the room, and I just didn't notice. Here's a big guy. He can have some grenades. And I had completely forgotten about the Bureau countermeasure to defeat his Elevated in this section with Launch. Not usually an easy task, but if I'm actually trying to do it, I'm sure I'll manage. You know, it looks like there are just another couple of guards, or I guess those are Rangers. Look kind of like they're wearing the helmets from anti-radiation suits. So there's a raised ceiling here, but there doesn't appear to be anything in it. We'll take a quick look around the other sections. Don't imagine there would be anything in extrasensory. Not really enough headspace for there to be anything. Won't disrupt the experiments this time. Although it is fun to use those cards for a sort of 52 card pickup kind of thing. At least when I'm not the one who has to pick them up. Don't expect there to be anything in hypnosis either. But it doesn't hurt to be thorough, because I know I haven't found everything in this game yet. Even in my complete file. And even though there's a hallway to be seen down there, I don't think we ever have a way to clear that broken geometry, and there's no way to get to the other side of it. Just another one of those things that you can see off in the distance to make the bureau look a little bigger than it is. I mean, nice touches, but it always leaves you wondering whether maybe there's something to it that you just haven't been able to find. And I think that pretty well covers this department. Only a couple of places left to check in this sector, and honestly, I want to leave the pit until the very, very end. We've already seen what's down there, and I have no desire to go deal with it again right now. In retrospect, I probably could have put off going back into luck and probability until I was ready to hit the Ritual Division. But here we are. I don't even remember whether I went into this shelter before. But since I don't see anything inside, I probably did. Usually there's going to be a pickup in one of those. But there must have been a document that I collected. Nothing in this restroom. So, out into the main area where there are those ledges way, way up at the top. There is stuff to do up there. So, I know it's possible to get there by riding the elevator up to the ritual office and then breaking out through the window. But it seems reasonable to try to find a way to levitate up from below, and I think I just spotted what it is. 
Let's see if standing on this gives me enough height. Indeed it does. And, yep, there are a couple of chests to find up here. And again, more ceiling space that I'm pretty sure nothing else exists in. In fact, I don't even know if he can see the ceiling of this room. Well, they've got a couple of low head spaces just to prevent you from levitating at the peak all the way from one side to the other. Very carefully walk across. And just up there is the window into the retro office proper. Should be able to get in there from here. I can, but I'm also pretty sure I cleaned this place out thoroughly the first time I was in, so... Not gonna worry about that. Just move on and make sure I didn't miss anything over on this side. Because it seems reasonable that they would put another chest over here. But it doesn't look like they did. So, alright, a few more hits to take out. And they're just going to give me ammunition. I'm fine with that. I'm assuming, yeah, there we go. The other one must be right below me. And the other one is even more right below me. I guess the other one must be at an angle where I can't even see him. There we go. They're all just hiding out of vision, and it's not really fair, but I guess they couldn't hit me from there either. Alright. I have got enough ability points to upgrade something. So while I would kind of like to build up my shield, or... Maybe just save up for the final levitation upgrade. I think I'm going to need to boost some of my basic stats a bit. Since I do have some of the toughest bosses in the game coming up. I think energy is going to be the most important thing in the near future. And I'm still one remote thought and a corrupted sample short of being able to upgrade Pierce, which... I think would be the best thing for me right now. Spin is also an option, but I just defeated the boss where it would have been the most useful. So, not really sure that any of those missions are in my immediate future. I'll just sit for a while and see what else comes up in the next couple of missions. I figure if there is a bureau alert that comes up in executive or maintenance, I might take up one of those missions at the same time. And back in the HRA lab. Intentionally this bad. Maybe he's trying to test our code breaking skills. I'm surprised. I didn't expect these two to have anything to say. And as far as I can tell, there's nothing here. There's no reason for you to come back. So they programmed in some lines of conversation just on the off chance that you came back to a place you've got no business being in. I want to see where Blackrock prisms lie on the Mohs scale of hardness. I mean, that sounds like an interesting thought. You know, testing black prisms for hardness, but... I don't know why they'd immediately want to test it against a diamond. You remember this room? Remember how long it took me to get into this door? 
It turns out I'm not any better at it when I actually have levitation. But, yeah, this is the point at which you're supposed to be able to get in here and get to the duck. And, like I said, it's on Langston's second list of AIs. So, if you don't just come here out of the blue, then you are directed to do it at some point. There's just no purpose to doing it now, because I've already cleared that spot out. And that was the tape recorder where they were doing the experiment on the duck. And that was a hiss demolition expert who clearly has friends, I just have to find them. And there's something else out there, but I can't see it. Nope, I see it. I'm seeing a hiss distorted. Or perhaps not seeing it. There we go. I still stand by spin being by far the best weapon for these. And I don't know whether my throw just completely misses it, but... The shield charge, I think, is far and away the best thing of all to use against his Distorted. In the original game, you really were just kinda stuck using spin and trying to reveal them. Once the DLC came out and introduced that move, it destroys them. And it protects you from most of what they can do to you. You got that thrown in time, but there's nobody for me to throw this at. And I was just about to throw it when it exploded in my hand. Wonderful. And I can't tell whether some of that smoke is just the vaporizing hiss or another hiss distorted out there. I think it is another hiss distorted. Yep, there it is. Oh, back to my old tactics. And another reason to bulk up on either shield strength or energy, or possibly both. The final shield upgrade doesn't do anything but recover your energy for as long as you have a shield up. But it makes the shield so much better. Another reason I kind of want to save up for it as soon as I can, but at the moment I've got higher priorities. So I think that covers pretty much everything. We'll go ahead and build up spin, though, because it has been useful and it does have its purpose against the upcoming boss. So I want to make sure it's as good as it gets. As for what to put on it, the specific rate of fire boost for spin is kind of nice, but being able to boost the rather weak damage that it does is probably going to be even better. I'm also not going to get much use out of C's in the near future, so let's take more energy. Because I'm going to be using a lot of stuff that consumes energy. This is just going to really help out with the upcoming fight. And I don't know why, but it doesn't actually have the name of the corrupted sample over there. I also picked up this shifting fragment along the way. While it was playing, I think I had missed that. I think I pointed out when I actually got it in the video. That's something that I don't think is supposed to appear outside of the areas that are only accessible in the expansion. We haven't gotten there yet. We will. So, the Synchronicity Department. The last place that we haven't been. Other than, of course, the pit. And I don't think there's anything we haven't looked at down here except for this mirror lab. 
which requires level six Why clearance. Keep an altered item here. And as you can probably see, there's something big going on here. This control point was added in the most recent patch, and even though it's not far from the one in Ritual Division to here, it's still a very, very nice addition. There's an entire report about the mirror. Which apparently has a parallel reality stored inside it. Perhaps this recording will tell us more. Debrief for a mirror excursion 7C. Subject is Agent Hardy. Hardy spent approximately three hours in the mirror. It's the longest time on record. Can you describe your experience inside, Agent Hardy? So, Agent Hardy is physically healthy. All tests have come back clean. Yet the speech issue has persisted for hours. Calm down, Agent. It could be psychosomatic, but the fact that this only occurred after returning from the mirror makes a paranatural explanation more likely. I recommend a battery of tests and a class orange quarantine. I don't know why there's usually so much conflation between the mirror and things temporarily going backwards. A lot of stories seem to do that. Kind of want to look at the mirror, but I'm going to open the right panel in order to see it. There we go, that's the mirror. And there's text reflected in it that isn't on the floor outside. Definitely going to keep that locked up. So in order to access the mirror, we would need to arrange the panels in a specific way. So we've got to solve a puzzle here just to get to the mirror, and then deal with whatever is inside. But that's going to be difficult. I'm not even going to attempt to do it in this video, so I'm going to leave it here, and I'll see you for Mirror Containment next time.